Hey guys, so this week's vlog is about the article by Campbell, Thompson, and Barrett called The Six Methodologies of Exploring, Teaching, and Learning. Um, it's a pretty long article, so I'm just going to try to summarize some of the main points and main takeaways that I had from um, reading this article, and hopefully that will help you guys out. Um, one of the first things he talked about was the four common places. And those are the learners, the teachers, the subject matter, and the context. Um, and all those things go into forming a curriculum. And one of the most important things to remember about those common places is we need to think about how each of the common places interacts with another common place. So how the teachers are interacting with the learners and how the learners are interacting with the subject matter. Um, so just kind of thinking about how those connections will be made. Um, it's really important to think about this because those connections in that central point is what really ensures that um, you're giving your students quality education. Um, the article also talks about what we can do to make sure that we are providing our students with meaningful educational experiences, and that would be to base your um, educational experiences off of continuity and interaction. So we obviously want our students to be very engaged in the learning process, but we also want them to feel like they can connect their experiences to prior learning. Um, this, I know for me personally, um, when I can connect something to something that I already learned, it kind of makes me feel like what I'm learning is more important and more valuable um, because it relates to something that I've already learned. So we want students to have those connections as well. Um, and then it kind of talked about um, how we need to make sure that if we're giving our students music education, we need to make sure that we're providing them with a comprehensive music education curriculum. Um, so that means that we want our students to be exposed to a wide variety of musical experiences. So this goes deeper than just having them play an instrument. Um, we want them to listen to music performed by other groups. Um, representing music on paper, studying the history of music, relating music to life experiences, and responding to music through feelings. Um, so we really want to expose students to how diverse music is, and we want them to be able to appreciate music and having them engage in like a lot of different types of musical experiences will help students feel like they're more connected to the music and find it more valuable and they'll be able to appreciate it more. Um, it also talked about how a balanced curriculum really indicates that a teacher has put a lot of thought and really cares about their students. So we obviously want students to know that we care about them and I think that we can do that by showing that we are providing them with lessons that will really benefit them. Um, it talked about how we can help our students feel more connected to the musical learning process if we really get to know our students well. So get to know what they like, what they dislike, um, getting to know their perspective of music, their point of view on music. And I think that that goes along with a lot of different subjects, like getting to know your students is never a bad thing. And the more you know them, the better you'll be able to tailor lessons that will be most beneficial to them. Um, the last thing that I talked about was kind of how when we're preparing music lessons, we need to keep in mind the culture of the school. So different schools are gonna have different norms and different policies and rituals and values um, that differ from maybe a school you were at before. So we need to keep those in mind when we're um, planning musical or really any lessons because that'll help students feel more comfortable with the lesson and the learning process. Um, so the question that I wanted to ask you guys for this week is, um, if you teach at a school without a dedicated music education program, how can you make sure that students are receiving a comprehensive music curriculum in just a general education classroom? Um, kind of like we've talked about in previous weeks, there's a lot of pressure on testing, so how can we make sure that um, there's time for a comprehensive music education program in just a regular classroom? So I look forward to hearing what you guys say, and I will see you this week.